Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back iPad enthusiasts to the rematch of the year. Only this time a new challenger has appeared and for the first time ever, we feature six very unique and different combatants who all want to take home the gold. It's time for these guys to run it back. Most of you guys are returning viewers, I hope at least, so I need to ask you guys for a favor. Only about 8% of my viewers are subscribed to my channel, so if you can, do me a solid, hit that red subscribe button as I'm trying to hit 60,000 subscribers by the end of the year at least. Trust me, we got a lot of cool vids in the pipeline for you guys, including more drain tests, unboxings, head-to-head -head comparisons, and even some live streams. All right, let's get into the action quickly, so let's roll the intro and head over to our official tale of the tape. All right, all right. I know some of you guys are returning viewers and are seasoned veterans when it comes to my drain test, so check the timestamps down below if you want to skip ahead to round number one. So, we have to introduce our tech titans. The positioning of the iPads will not change whatsoever throughout the entirety of the drain test. So first, over all the way on the left is our iPad Mini 6th Gen in purple featuring the A15 Bionic chip. To its right is our sole remaining geezer, I mean dinosaur, I mean iPad that still features a home button and is our reigning, defending, undisputed champ. Ladies and gents, give it up for the 9th gen iPad featuring the now more aged A13 chip. Our newest combatant is third from left. It's the brand new 10th gen iPad in yellow with that fresh redesign. This new iPad features the still impressive A14 chip. The third from right is our 5th gen iPad Air featuring the extremely overkill M1 chip. The second from right is our brand new 11 inch iPad Pro, now with the updated M2 chip. And no worries, I will put out a full review on the new M2 iPads after this video. I'll attach a card at the top right. And finally, the gargantuan iPad 12.9 inch is the farthest over there on the right. It's the biggest, it's the heavyweight, and it also features the new M2 chip. Give it up for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. All right, that's our tell of the tape. You guys already know the basic rules. All iPads are hooked up to the same Wi-Fi network, all are set to 60% brightness with Do Not Disturb turned on, on all of them, and careful attention was placed to ensure this is a fair fight, so all other settings are identical. All right, round number one, here we go. For this one, as is customary, we hit them with a quick standby test. Consider it a warm-up. However, do note that bigger displays do have to pump out a ton more pixels, even more so if you crank the brightness all the way to 100. Whether you think about it or not, we all let our devices just hang idle from time to time, and that time starts to add up and consequently has an impact on your battery, as you'll see. Here are the results after 90 minutes of a warm-up. From left to right, our mini comes in at 83%, the 9th gen iPad at 83 the new 10th gen at a much more impressive 88%, percent the air in blue at 82 the 11 inch pro at the same level as the 10th gen at 88 percent and in last place our heavyweight must have skipped cardio on the treadmill as it has to strain a little harder during warm-up officially dropping to 80 percent so far it's still anyone's fight but for now, we have the 11-inch Pro and 10th Gen iPad tied for first place. Before round two starts, quickly pause this video and drop a comment as to who you think will take home the gold. All right, round number two, now we're starting to pick up the pace. For this one, we did a 60-minute multitasking test comprising a variety of everyday applications. For example, we cranked up Apple Music to start us off and started shuffling music in the background while surfing the Apple Store. Then we slowly opened up more tabs, scrolled some more, and then finally we combined two apps in one so that we have two different tabs open simultaneously, and we even had some picture-in-picture -picture action going on in there, playing some Apple TV off to a corner. The aim of this test was to mimic real-world usage of the average person. So after about 60 minutes of use, we arrive at the following figures. The mini falls to 65%, the 9th gen is now at 70, the 10th gen iPad with the redesign comes in at 75%, the Air tumbles down to 62%, the 11 inch Pro is still holding its own coming in at a cool 69, and yet again in last place, the iPad 12.9 inch sits at 59%. 
but don't count it out just yet. The fight is still way too early to call. Anything can still happen. For our third test, we headed over to two different applications I'm sure 90% of us watching open at least once a day. That's right, social media has prevailed in a lot of our lives for years now. It's like it's almost a part of our everyday routine. In any case, we can't deny we can definitely do with some time off away from social media every so often. But for the sake of our drain test, we first opened up Twitter and scrolled through my For You page for about 30 minutes. This was the day following the midterm elections here in the US, but sadly, us Georgia residents must still suffer even more political ads this winter, seeing as how Georgia is now going to a runoff. Oh boy, when will it end? Anyway, after 30 minutes browsing on Twitter, we then open up Instagram and scroll through reels for again 30 minutes. So after a cumulative 60 minutes, this is what we arrive at. Let's switch it up now starting over on the right hand side with the heavyweight. The 12.9 inch now succumbs to probably a poor training regimen as it falls down to 41%. To its left, the 11 inch pro sits at a more respectable 55% while the air also seems to slip down to 46%. In first place, at the current moment of this testing, is the 10th gen iPad sitting at a very healthy 61%, while its 9th gen younger brother falls a little more, down to 56%. And finally, the Mini is now at half capacity, exactly sitting at 50%. What's interesting here is if the 10th gen iPad were not present, our reigning, defending battery champ would be in first place. All right, going on to round number four, the streaming test, notorious for slashing our combatants' batteries and really putting them to the test. This test is our longest one to mimic real world media consumption because let's be real, we never just watch a singular episode of our favorite show. Nah, some of us finish whole entire series in a single sitting. And I mean, hey, it's no hate. It also works out because this is the test that is the most AFKable, which means I get to take a break from babysitting tablets all day and go out and get some fresh air, grab some dinner, take my cat out on the porch and read, etc. But because we have six iPads this time around, I believe Netflix's device limit is five, so I'd be short one. So instead, you gotta be smart and think of solutions on your feet. Again, everything has to be fair, so three of them ran my comfort show, which is Narcos, on Netflix for 90 minutes, while the other three tuned into some good old family guy over on Hulu. Then, after roughly an hour and a half, they switch. So now the Netflix iPads watched Hulu, and the Hulu ones went on to Netflix for the same amount of time. I'm telling you, have to be consistent and fair here. So with that, please drop a like if you're finding this video entertaining or useful. These videos take an eternity to put together, and a like goes a long way in showing me that you appreciate the legwork that goes on behind the scenes to make these videos possible. Also, go ahead and go follow me over on my socials. That way, you're able to vote on the next content. I also do have a ton of channel polls, updates, and the occasional meme or two. I appreciate you guys so much, but anyway, back to our show. Three hours later, just how well are these iPads performing? The answer for some of these, not good. I don't know what happened here, but our mighty air tripped up or got an injury or something because it surprises us in dropping into last place, coming in at a very low 7%. After that, our heavyweight prevails slightly by advancing to second to last place for the time being, coming in at 9%. In fourth is the mini with 13%, followed by the 11 inch in third with 22%. And ladies and gents, looks like we're gonna have a great showdown here. It's a slugfest. Neither the 10th gen nor the 9th gen wanna take the L. They're both tied in first place, both at 24%. Trust me guys, this one is gonna be a nail biter. We now head into our championship rounds. We're roughly seven and a half hours into the test and you gotta give it up to these guys. That's a long time for them to be continuously on and powering through. Will round number five take any of these iPads with it into the shadow realm? Let's find out. Round number five is our 60 minute gaming test, but this time with a twist. Now, normally I either run Asphalt 9, Clash Royale, or Temple Run, but this time we played two games at once to sort of make the test a little bit more realistic. Besides, I still needed to clock in my GBL battles over on Pokemon Go and hand these dorks some L's, which by the way, here is my trainer code. If you do Pogo, send me a friend request. Maybe we can raid together, send each other gifts, who knows? So each iPad will get a turn running as many battles as I could get in within 10 minutes each, while the rest ran Temple Run 2 looping in the background. Honestly, it was a tough night. 
maybe 50-50 on the dubs on Pogo, but even before we could finish, we have our first loser. I really don't know what went on here. Maybe the bigger display was the 12.9 inch eventual downfall as it fell flat and came in last place, clocking out with an official time of eight hours and nine minutes. But guys, this gets crazy, cause as I was writing down the time on my official handy dandy scorecard, the air shuts off literally within a minute. It comes in fifth place with a singular minute of improvement. Man, I surely was not expecting these results, but it is what it is. Our remaining four iPads thankfully did complete the gaming test, and from left to right, our mini, putting in a very valiant effort, now dwindles down to two percentage points, just about calling it quits. But guys, incredibly, the rivalry between the 9th and 10th gen is fierce. Would you believe they are again tied? Neither of them wants the other one to take the lead. Astonishingly, both coming in at 14%. But let's not forget, the 11 inch has tremendous heart. It's still in it to win it, coming in at a very respectable 11%, not too far behind. All right, boys and girls, with two iPads dead and four remaining, how is your pick doing? We won't stop until we have one iPad standing, so now let's head over into our penultimate round. Round number six is our Apple Pencil test. But even before the Apple Pencil struck the glass, the iPad mini hit us with that yeet and throws in the towel with an official time of eight hours and 28 minutes, not that long after our fifth and sixth place losers. Many, many people love taking notes on the iPads, myself including. It's just so easy nowadays to digitally store stuff or email documents to yourself or peers. It's just awesome. So I take notes and or draw whatever happened to reach my brain at that moment, but I did want to mention the absolute idiotic way you must pair the first gen Apple Pencil to the 10th gen iPad. Like take a look at this monstrosity. First, if you don't have one already, you have to buy the stupid $9 USB-C to lightning adapter. You have to connect one side to a USB-C cable, not included by the way, then hook it up to the iPad and and then stick the Apple Pencil into the other side of the adapter. Like it's so extra and dumb, but okay, rant over. The thing is, guys, you're simply not gonna believe this. It's coming down to the wire. After the conclusion of this test, the 11 inch Pro is still standing, not giving up, holding on to dear life with a singular point, officially down to 1%. And ladies and gents, the improbability of the next two will shock you. Again, these two juggernauts are tied once again with both coming in at 2%. You simply can't make this shit up. Oh my goodness, who's gonna take it? At this point, the haymakers are flying, all three are gassed out, only the best will prevail. Let's ring the bell and start the seventh and final round. For the last test, we feature our YouTube test and head over to the hottest tech channel on the entire internet, the Juan and Only, and we play our battery drain playlist until there's one standing. My cat Bean and I were actually right off camera because we were both in extreme suspense. Which of the three do you think is gonna gas out first? You're simply not gonna believe this. On the count of three, give me your prediction. Three, two, one. It's the ninth gen iPad that falls officially at third place. Our reigning champ finally gets dethroned, throwing in the towel with an official time of nine hours and 10 minutes. And then there were two. Given that all three were under 2%, we wouldn't expect these to last too much longer. But the question is, who will be our new champ? Will it be the all new 10th gen or will the 11 inch with the M2 finally take home the gold? Once again, on the count of three, you ready? Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, the 11 inch pro dies soon after the 9th gen to achieve silver status with a time of nine hours and 13 minutes, which means we have a winner and new battery drain champ, the brand new and redesigned 10th generation iPad. Guys, I really hope you found this video useful. I know how much you all enjoy these tests, but I also hope they allow for you to make a more well-informed decision, seeing as many consumers' priority is longevity and battery life. Don't forget to subscribe and comment down below which drain test you'd like to see next, the iPhone 14 lineup drain test or a first for the channel, an Apple Watch drain test. As always, appreciate every single one of you. We just hit 58,000 not too long ago, but I know one day we'll hit our huge milestone of 100,000 subscribers. Bye for now, but I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.